Okay. Right, we'll move on with our next session then. Um, can, I, can I just ask, yeah. can you speak a bit closer to the mic? Okay. Um, it's just a bit quiet. I, don't, I guess you're not mic'd up. No, no, we're just relying on the yeah. podium mics. That's fine. Okay. Right, okay. Our next session, we've got Fiona Hadley, and she'll be talking about um, students as partners in technology initiatives. Okay. Sorry, we've started a bit early, so... We might have a bit more time at the end for, for questions. questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Does that sound okay? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? <laughs> I think it's probably because um, two people before were standing a bit further back. But if I if I lean in, then probably you'll be able to hear me. Okay. So I'm um, Fiona Handley from the, um, the Centre for Learning and Teaching at the University of Brighton. Um, and I'm here to talk about some uh, research that I've been doing um, into students as partners in technology initiatives. So to really have a kind of think about what the, um, the aspects of partnership and the aspects of technology within those. Um, so I'm going to have um, a quick overview of um, the research that I've been doing, have a look at some of the characteristics of the partnerships in those projects, look at the role of technology, um, and then think about a bit about more about this in terms of um, practices as, as learning technologists. So um, I guess the bigger picture, the background to this is, is, um, is students as partners work and the development of these a series of practices and activities and what you might call discourses around students as partners that has developed in the UK in the last 10 years um, and probably at conferences like this at events run by JISC um, and in other um, and things like the Change Agent Network conferences and other growing organisations such as RAISE, where student, uh, students as partners has become, become a thing. It's become something that has um, surfaced on university agendas. And what I'm particularly interested in is the, the tight relationship that the development of this idea of students as partners has had, particularly in the UK, with um, technology. So um, that's the kind of the background of my interest in this. Um, and in particular, um, we come back to that idea, why is this important? Um, things to do with students as partners of reaching, uh, reaching out, getting more and more attention because of this, this idea here that actually students as partners work um, can do some of that challenging of the hierarchy uh, within education systems between students and teachers and kind of do some of the subverting of that, um, of that hierarchical relationship. So um, in students as partners work, there's, um, and in the discourse around it, there's lots of like, positive emphasis on the potential of this work to be really transformative, to create transformed learning communities that we're part of. The downside of that is that we also get getting caught up in the minute, uh, at the moment really, with um, some critiques of students as partners, that, it's, um, they've been, that um, these initiatives are being too closely aligned to what we might call kind of neoliberal discourses about um, the role of students in, in universities today. And it's kind of pitched as a counter to um, the, uh, the role of students as consumers, that you can develop new, close relationships with, um, with staff through this idea of students as partners. So what's happening is there's been a kind of real focus, um, a kind of bit of an energising of research into this area. And I just wanted to, to highlight this, this one paper by um, Mercer and Mapstone et al, who've done a really big piece of work um, looking at students as partners um, across lots of different, um, different countries, bringing together lots of different information. They're not focusing on technology, but what they were saying is basically the key things are around um, dialogue and negotiation. They want to make sure that when we're reporting on these projects, we're looking at the positive and the negative sides of the, um, of the projects. Um, and also that we kind of begin to explore the broadness of those, of those projects, in particular to think about other partnerships. And this is, I guess, where my bit of work, my interest sits. So I'm not just interested in the lecturer um, student relationship, but the other people, the learning technologists, the librarians, the academic developers who are involved in these partnerships. And the other destabilizing element, I suppose, in this relationship, which calls on that, um, the uh, things to do with technology, um, 
is the fact that when people learn about technology, they do do so outside of usually without outside of any kind of formal curriculum. So already technology has the um, the potential there for kind of subverting some of those roles because there's no kind of hierarchical um, approach to staff, um, a lecturer and a and a student. Um, so there's less of a power relationship there when we're talking about learning about technology. So when we bring all of this together, we can see that there, there is some potential um, within these partnership workings focusing on technology to destabilise um, this arena of, of, um, of learning. So my world then has been caught up in researching the DigiChamps, the iChamps, the partners, the ambassadors, the change agents, familiar terminology that you might have come, come quite used to over the last few years. So I'm looking at those kind of projects, but I'm also looking at the, um, the smaller projects that don't have the big headline names, but kind of attach on to this, these discussions. They too um, attach themselves, they kind of hook onto the students as partners um, umbrella. Um, and I'm interested in seeing how they all uh, create this, the way that we talk and the things that we do um, in these initiatives and how they're kind of generating change as, as, we, as we go forward. So um, my research project really has got two main parts to it. So um, the, uh, the kind of underlying background research is looking at um, students as technology partners uh, looking at 69 case studies that I've drawn from um, conference abstracts and papers that have been presented in the UK and um, that have been drawn from 51 higher education providers, so 51 universities. So um, I'm kind of contrasting that really with the, uh, some more detailed case studies that um, I've done through uh, semi-structured interviews with um, participants in those schemes. So the way to kind of conceptualise that in a way is once the big picture, this is the official story of what's going on, um, on the other side we've got the smaller detailed case studies which really reveal the, in, the I guess the unspoken and the unofficial narratives of, of what's been going on in this area. So the desk based research, as I said, was, um, I've identified 65 projects, 69 projects, um, 51 higher education providers, and out of those 69 projects, 106 pieces of dissemination, so that could be conference abstracts, um, that could be papers, um, and I've been analysing those to look, at, to look for things like who's involved, who are the partners, how, what kind of technologies they're using, what, kind, what can we say about the partnerships in those projects. Now, as that would suggest, what you can see is that what you might have is one university is, is producing several different case studies and each of those case studies will be uh, generating several different points of dissemination. So it's quite a big and complex task. And the important thing to remember here is that these are self-expressed by the, the participants in these projects. This is how they view their partnership working. So that's quite a key thing to remember. Um, and in contrast, the six case studies, um, these were chosen because they represented schemes that uh, you're probably familiar with that have been, existed over a longer period of time that, um, are, uh, that are also, um, and also include some newer schemes. And I chose them because they, were, they offered some opportunities where I could see that students were taking on new roles that might challenge this hierarchical thing. So basically kind of inter-teaching roles. Um, so there were semi-structured interviews with participants and in four of the schemes, several of the partners were interviewed. So let's have, have a look really, first of all, at that kind of who question. Who are the partners? So we're looking at the, the desk-based research here. So from presenting at conferences quite like this one, in fact, alt conferences from 40, um, 2014 to 2017 were part of this, uh, this study. We can see that um, most of the kind of lead partners in these uh, projects presenting at these kind of uh, conferences were lecturers, actually, which surprised me somewhat, um, followed by learning technologists, so um, people, like, people like you, with the rest of, the, uh, of that pie chart then really highlighting 
the range of different people who are involved in these projects. So people from employability and careers, uh, people like me, academic developers, um, a kind of range of different students, including students with kind of more coordinating official roles, um, librarians or people who work in libraries, and then other staff, perhaps people who are specifically titled student um, as working in student engagement. What was also interesting, and this project really, I guess, starts to explore, is the, um, the partnerships that go beyond just a member of staff and a student to connect across perhaps different services. So um, what I was uh, particularly interested in perhaps is obviously there are lots of partners where staff and students partner together and staff within the same service, so two learning technologists and a, and a student partner together. But what we find is the most typical cross-service um, uh, partnership is the lecturer learning technologist student partnership. Now, interestingly, um, although the numbers are quite small, librarians just partner with themselves, um, while academic partners like me, they'll just partner with anybody. We, we work with anyone. So in terms then of the dissemination, so people coming along to conferences, people um, doing the writing of the journal articles, you can see, again, the, uh, the range of uh, participants there. This would be good where I have my little, my little thing here. Does that work? Yeah, I'm pointing at the wrong bit. That's why. OK, so you can see the range of partners there. And obviously, um, given that students uh, were partnering with all of those people, obviously, they're going to be the largest um, section here. And we can see the types of students. So most, of, most students, we don't know whether they're undergraduate or postgraduate, but we can probably um, work out from this that the majority of, of students being involved in these projects are undergraduate students. And so this was the, the kind of gross totals of all of the partners. And then if we look in particular at the 106 dissemination activities, so there's points of dissemination, so it could be 100, that might be sort of 100 conference outs, perhaps six papers, 31, so approximately a third, involve students in some way or another, which gives you an idea of the kind of the, the status of, of students within that partnership. Um, and this is some information from um, the, uh, the case study, the, uh, the interview data. And this really is just here to highlight perhaps the complexity of some of these relationships. So these are the people that I interviewed um, and already you can see uh, in, a, in this particular case study that there is, there's lots going on in terms of um, the partnerships that learning technologists were developing. And if we consider that these are the people I spoke to as well as, and they were partnering with other people who I didn't manage to get to speak to, think of the students working who were actually working in pairs on this project, um, the other lecturers that they were engaging with, you can begin to see that actually, you know, there's enormous networks of partnerships going on. And if we did something else, which would be kind of to connect those projects in terms of the networks of influence between them, that would be another, um, another kind of three-dimensional aspect to that. So the what. What kinds of activities related, uh, relate to the, uh, relating to technology um, took place? So um, as I was um, coding the abstracts and um, um, papers, uh, I've, um, I coded them basically to kind of cover the, com as much of the variety as I could, but really um, they've then been sort of consolidated down into these groupings. So um, there's more information underneath this, but I think these groupings here work particularly well. So what we can see is that the, um, the technologies that, uh, or the activities around technologies that uh, were most, uh, most frequent were the creation of learning resources, then the promotion or use of social media, and then the promotion or use of um, VLE apps and software, while consultation and research, so students working on, uh, as consultants, as researchers, um, finding out about technology, um, was also quite common. Surprisingly, we found that device promotion, which is a little yellow um, slice, was actually much lower than I, I was perhaps expecting. Um, while the other segment really covers um, the projects where students were doing loads of things, you couldn't really categorise uh, 
what, what they were doing, and also kind of more discipline-specific um, activities. So just to give you an idea of the, the things that those, uh, those activities would cover, the creation of resources would be um, things like creating animations, um, lots of things to do with assessment, um, and quite a lot of video, work in video. While the research was around creating, running uh, focus groups, students would be running focus groups, doing hack days, looking at uh, VLE use, and also doing things like distributing the GISC um, student tracker survey. Um, and then things like VLEs, app software, is kind of talking about promotion there of lecture capture, Nearpod, um, and also um, supporting people in the introduction of new VLEs. Um, social media divided into professional social media, so I think things like Twitter and LinkedIn and other social media that we're familiar with. Particularly, um, the act of blogging is quite an important thing that students get involved in. So then I've tried to kind of pick down to that next level, and then we start to move to those numbers getting quite small. So these are kind of quite broad brush ideas here, but um, what I wanted to do was just pull out some further characteristics that might help uh, some analysis further down the line. So what I wanted to kind of highlight really was learning technologists and lecturers typically would work in partnership to create digital learning resources. Uh, lecturers work in partnerships with students to create learning resources or, or do things around social media. Um, and student-led projects create, tend to focus again on social media or learning resources. Um, library staff tend to do things on social media. Um, and then employability staff always do things either on professional social media or it's something that involves students creating video of themselves or doing something with video. What this doesn't um, highlight, so that what that also suggests is that research and consultation is something that everybody does um, and that promotion of apps and VLEs is also something that, that everybody does. So um, I wanted to start to move towards thinking about, um, you know, how can we measure the amount of partnership that's going on? And um, there's increasingly um, uh, a number of different models that you can use which, which highlight this. So um, Bovill and Bully, particularly, I think it's Catherine Bovill, is a very, is, is very respected um, writer in the field of student engagement. So this is one of her models that that's gets used for this activity. So at the top is basically um, students, uh, uh, tutors are in control, while at the bottom it's that shift to students being in control of decision making. So I did a quick um, piece, of, I've just pulled out some highlights here to really contrast perhaps two different um, two of those different um, technology acti activities. So the creation of learning resources and the consultation or, uh, or research projects, just to kind of contrast slightly um, the amount of participation in there. So um, you can see at the top of, the, um, of that ladder, the, the more yellow color, this is where students are given a task and they complete it. Well, at the bottom end of that ladder, the dark red, is where students define the project. They complete it themselves using the terms and the um, boundaries that they themselves have set. And what this suggests here is just from, you know, kind of just highlighting here really some of the key points that probably things where students are um, involved in doing uh, research and consultation tend to sit towards the top of that ladder, so they're told to go off and do a task, um, and they, they do it, they consult with students. But there is a possibility that they can, they can make that more of a, an enriched partnership by doing more of the, um, the deciding what they want to capture and what, um, what information they need to, to be able to make this as a valid um, piece of research. So just to flip now to um, thinking about, uh, that was all from the Dodespe survey to looking at the interview data and seeing if we can find some kind of areas of overlap. So um, from, my, uh, from work interviewing learning technologists, from libraries and from academic developers, so the non-academic staff, we can see that actually their main experience of partnership 
is, is, is a very positive one, and the positiveness of it is based on the pleasure of working with students, which I think in itself is a really interesting thing because it's something that we don't perhaps express in professional services, is we work in education, but we don't really have that much to do with students. So finding opportunities to work with students is something we, we quite often quite crave. Um, but the main, um, when they talk about that partnership working, what they talk about is the insights and experience that students bring as students into that partnership. It's about validating information um, and about um, bringing that student perspective. They also talk quite often about mentoring as a kind of model for partnership as well, which is interesting. From a student perspective, all the students were positive and very positive about their experiences um, of, of working with, um, with different members of staff. They, they see this idea of partnership as being based on equality and about being equal. Um, and a successful partnership is one where they feel equal to, um, to staff. So, um, so students say things like, we were seen as equals and it was a partnership, so all of our ideas were valid. Um, and academic developers and other uh, learning technologists talk very much about this. This is what we try and instill in students. This is about equality. And um, they, they also have relationships with new relationships with the students they're working with. So they have a different change in their relationship with their fellow students. But perhaps the big step change here there, which is, which is obviously really fundamental to what we're, what we're aiming for, is their change in relationship to, um, to academic members of staff. So they, they repeatedly, and not necessarily always when talking about technology, but they talk about this as being um, an extension of this confidence that you need to be able to ask a lecturer a question to then be able to engage in a discussion about technology or about, or about just generally. Um, and this is how they categorize this idea of partnership. And what's really interesting is that this is definitely a threshold that students get across because then they can see, um, they say things like, it, it was quite an odd role reversal to be teaching them about technology. It obviously became quite normal. So once you get over that threshold, it becomes obvious this, of course I can talk to a lecturer in that particular way. Um, so when we talk about dialogue um, in partnership working, this must be, I think this is a key area to look into. So um, the work also highlighted what we can, um, you know, what we can sort of say about uh, how this worked in terms of the technologies involved. So the most successful partnerships really were were where students could either come in with lots of different ideas and take one of them forward, or have an idea, share, discuss, and be able to adapt it. But the important thing was how they went about that communication to do the choosing and adapting. And that's the, those issues to do with communication, probably, you know, that's probably key. Okay, so that's the, the the really positive side was the kind of the professional services lecturers, very positive feedback. Lecturing, uh, lecturing staff, I think, um, I should probably add that the gatekeepers to all of the projects that I ended up doing the interviews on were all professional services staff rather than lecturers. So these perhaps don't represent the lecturers who would have been presenting at places like this. So these were perhaps people who had been brought into the project further down the line, line rather than initiating them. But again, these are the, this is the relationship with, that we're trying to challenge here, the student lecturer relationship, or at least one of them. So, uh, so I think it's fair to say that based on the interviews that I did, that um, generally lecturers still see this, the partnership working that they've been undertaking as pretty much a transactional um, arrangement where they've got, a, they've got a problem. The problem is... I don't know how to use this technology or I need to do something here um, and there's a student there or somebody, anybody, who will help them with that. If the job gets done and that problem is sorted, that's what they consider something as being successful. Um, and what I found doing the interviews was that um, 
what we found was that um, sometimes, you know, these high profile projects that we're very familiar with, actually when it came down to the ground, um, the lecturing staff involved in them weren't even aware that they were part of these, these big um, headline projects that we're so familiar with. And one of them said, I think, I think the one you're asking me about is that we hired two students to assist us. Now, just to counter that with that student's experience of that partnership was completely transformative. And yet for that lecturer, this was just somebody else, another member of their paid staff helping them out. So really interesting. And so they do also share this idea of, you know, the, acknowledge the importance of bringing um, students in to bring that student perspective in the same way that learning technologists, academic developers do. And they do have some moments of connection that slightly point towards those issues of all those things to do with equality, where so one, um, one member of academic staff saw that a student in a session that was being run was feeling quite overwhelmed and, and said to him, we're all, we're all in the same boat. Yeah, we're all, this is, you know, we've all been there. You know, we're all in that, face those challenges. And there's that kind of sense of it, trying to develop that sense of equality. But overall, perhaps um, some food for thought there, really. So um, within these projects, then, um, what I found, um, perhaps reported on previously, really, is that these projects don't really have a massive impact on um, the, uh, the use of uh, technology, although they do have a very important role, perhaps, in raising awareness of, of technology use amongst the participants. Um, have I missed it? Did I miss that? No, I haven't. Okay. Um, and one thing I wanted to also highlight was that um, at the root in when people talk about technology, they quite often are still talking about very much um, students having, coming into this uh, right, um, partnership with a, uh, a, a good use of technology. They're still coming from the perspective that students possibly are more that digital native, that they should be familiar with technology, that sh they should have loads of brilliant ideas about how to use technology. And it's almost always countered by a kind of, oh, um, quite often they say, well, I know I'm not sort of supposed to say that anymore. It's like, yeah, we're, we're, this, this discourse around that has moved on in a way, but actually what we find is that still is the entry point for allowing these, um, these uh, schemes to actually take place. And even though they sort of backtrack and actually say, well, actually students weren't as good or students um, didn't, didn't do exactly what I was thinking they were going to do, um, this still leaves kind of space for students to become involved in these projects, which, which I think is, you know, it's kind of interesting so that we've all moved on from that, from talking perhaps about that, but still there's, um, there's a kind of ghost of that in the machine. So, just to highlight then some quick points. So this immigrant, um, natives, immigrants trope still exists and it still, it still hasn't, it's still active even though nobody actually talks about it directly. Um, because the official narrative of, of kind of partnership is around equality and it's around dialogue and a bit about this idea of mentoring as being a sort of a bit of a role model. Um, it's also important to realise that actually where people, some people are talking about partnership, but there are still partners who are not talking about partnership. They don't have a narrative around partnership and technology at all. Um, and I just want to highlight some preliminary results which would suggest that um, kind of drawing this together, that this lecturers and, and all learning technologists offer working partnership with students, offer the greatest potential for partnership working, especially if students are able to choose from their own ideas or, and or adapt them and learn to communicate them well. And it's perhaps supporting the key issues, supporting that element of choice and also those issues to do with communication because it's the communication that supports the dialogue that, that brings about the flowering of that partnership. But really the emphasis is on dramatically different experiences of partnership across these projects. Um, 
even in projects which what we will be familiar with that are funded successful um, this isn't something that is you know experienced by all of those partners and perhaps when we're talking about partnership is to go back to that kind of original idea when we're talking about those transformations those transformational shifts in our relationships which will then hopefully go on and, and change the um, you know our institutional um, settings around learning and um, that's that's what we're going to kind of keep in the backs of our minds so closing thoughts really is for those of you involved in partnership working is to think about communicating the idea of partnership are you are you when you're thinking about partnership are you thinking about are you thinking about the partnership or are you just thinking about how to deliver a particular service do all stu uh, all participants understand what what partnership is what their their role in that is and also a point of reflection really in terms of thinking about your your desire to engage with students and why you want to get involved in partnership projects is that enough is that transformational enough do we need to to rephrase that those desires in something which suggests more of a transformation that will be really begin to kind of change the way that we talk about partnerships and technology and that is it thank you very much thank you right any questions I've actually got a question to ask. Right. I, go into that. Um, I wasn't too sure. Was it whole institution projects you mentioned? You interviewed some lecturers, you mentioned some papers that you looked at, or was mm -hmm. it particular schools that were involved in these projects? So it would be um, the uh, particular initiatives within universities. Within universities. So, so it would be um, you know, based in one particular service, and they'd be running them either as um, uh, you know, some students would be, might be volunteers or some schemes they might be paid, yeah. but they'd be organised in that way. No. So, Okay, that makes sense. I've got a question on me to ask. Um, so it's a two-part question. Did you look at students' perceptions on uh, dissemination of findings and experiences? Uh, if so, did you find that they regarded it as part of their responsibility towards the partnership or outside of their comfort zone? Ooh, interesting question. I didn't touch on this because it's a really, really big thing. <laughs> Uh, students' role in partnership, in, in the dissemination events, particularly students coming along to events like this, was, I would say, part of that transform transformatory experience from their perspective. The reason I didn't really talk about it, because it's like, I haven't worked out yet, is that to do with partnership? I'm also interested in in, in um, students as partners work, but it's being what they what's being termed around performance, students performing partnership. So one of the key areas that people are interested in is, is doing exactly that, bringing students along to conferences and they sit on panels and they talk about their experiences. How does that relate to partnership and how does it relate to the other things that we get them to do in these partnership projects like appear in videos? Were any of these partnerships particularly strong? I know you mentioned the ones with students and learning um, technologists or with the academics and things like that. I know the academics have a way to go in terms of realising their own transformation, but mm -hmm. were there ones that were particularly strong in your opinion? Um, I think the stronger ones are exactly those where students are able to exercise a lot of control. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to... Um, so they... They exercise control, they work over several different projects, and so they are able to use their, um, their experiences to then feed into the next project. So there's, there's also sort of duration, because the less successful ones were basically where students were told to come along and do this at this particular session, and they'll come along and demonstrate a piece of technology and then move. That's fine. Some people's experiences were positive, others less, but in terms of partnership, it's quite low down on that on that ladder. Okay. Any more questions? No. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.